Welcome to today's video where we're going to be talking about counterfeit components and ICs. Now this is a video I've been wanting to do for a while, but I just haven't got any co counterfeit components recently. But as you can tell by this video, I got some. We're not going to be focusing too much on where they came from because any of these vendors that you buy this stuff from, it can happen with them. Uh, when I say any of these vendors, I don't mean your manufacturer authorized vendors like DigiKey, Mauser, that's just, you're not going to get counterfeit components, or at least it's highly unlikely to get them from those vendors. But any of those gray market sources where it's, hey, I need this obsolete component, and they're selling used ones or uh, new old stock ones, there's a risk of getting counterfeit components. And I buy a lot of stuff from them, so I've kind of expected to get some especially because one of these other ones that uh, I like to order, there are known to be counterfeits out there that will not work. Uh, a video I've been wanting to do, and we're gonna look at this counterfeit component that I got and how to identify that it is a counterfeit uh, or at least a not genuine component. So before we really get into looking at the counterfeit components, let's talk about some of the stuff you would want for identifying them. You're gonna want some uh, acetone or fingernail polish remover, which I just uh, stole from my wife. And you're gonna want uh, an eye loop or a uh, microscope to get a good look at it. The acetone or the fingernail polish remover, you're gonna use that to try to remove any black topping, which is a ink or paint that they'll put on top of the IC to hide the fact that they sanded it or to hide the old etching when they re-etched it. Because any genuine component, you're not going to be be able to remove anything with uh, acetone. They 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 just aren't painted or anything. So so that's not going to do anything to a genuine component. And then the other thing that you want is that eye loop or the microscope or something like that. So that way you can look at it for directional sanding uh, and to look to see if you see any ghosting on the uh, IC. So those are kind of your tools you need. So nothing super expensive. Uh, everything that I'm going to discuss in this video is non-destructive uh, testing. So we're not going to be decapping and actually looking at the dye inside there. Uh, it's all just non-destructive identification that you can do yourself at home without the need of a x-ray, a um, scanning electron microscope, uh, or uh, harm, harmful acids to, uh, to decap and look at the inside. So let's actually take a look at uh, some counterfeits and their um, genuine counterparts next to each other. Um, we'll actually be looking a lot at photographs in this video just because it is hard to get the quality that we need out of video uh, to really identify this stuff. Okay, so first we have our counterfeit here, which is marked by the pen, and then three genuine of the same IC uh, from kind of different gener generations of it. Um, so this one is actually oriented the same. The pin one marker is up here. So you'll notice first thing that jumps out is that the etching is off by 90 degrees, which makes it a pretty obvious counterfeit. Uh, you can also see uh, some of the residue from the sanding here at the end of it. Uh, that was covered up by the black topping that is on top of here. We also have dir directional sanding that you can almost see in the video. We'll get a better look at that on a photograph here soon. And that the um, the actual Freescale logo here is just not quite right. It's um, a little blurry compared to this. Uh, these two are the Motorola ones before it got sold to Freescale. Uh, but yes, we have a, a Motorola MC variant, and then we have the XC by Motorola, and then we have the Freescale XC. And uh, this could very well be any one of these that they sanded and just put this etching on to match that. But we have no way of knowing what this actually is because they sanded the top of it. We could decap it and see if it is the same on the inside. Uh, but that's beyond the scope of this video. Okay, so let's take a look here at the bottom. Uh, we're actually going to be looking at the ejector mark here, uh, which is where they ejected it out of the mold while it was still kind of hot, so it leaves a mark in there. So they actually stamp in the factory that it is manufactured in, the country of origin on there. Um, but that can vary from manufacturer to manufacturer of what is in the injector mark. 
Uh, and it also can vary from factory to factory that that manufacturer uses. Like Atmel chips actually get manufactured at a couple of different factories around the world, and they'll have different country of origins in there, and they kind of look a little bit different uh, based on that. So that is one of the things that I, I wouldn't care too much about what's actually in it as long as we know that is a genuine uh, location for that factory. Like if they have China on there and there's no Chinese factory for that company, then eh, you, you know you may want to uh, kind of be curious of why it says that. But so the main thing we're going to be looking for is that it's a different texture inside your ejector mark uh, than it is from the outside of the casing. Because you're going to have the mold casing there, and then when the injector hits it, um, it, it should be a kind of smoother texture or at least a different texture, which it is that case on all three of these. Um, so we know our mark on the back is probably a good mark on the back, even though our front doesn't match. The one thing that is suspect looking here at the back is that this, this hole here is actually down while these two it's up. Uh, so the, that middle circle looking thing is, uh, raised on these two while it is inverted down into it on that one. So uh, could that could be a clue that we have something not genuine here uh, but the main thing we're looking for is like if they sandblasted them you'll generally end up with the same texture in here as you do on the outside because they want to get that kind of coarse texture that you generally get from the inside of the molds uh, back on there after they sand them so the bottom side of this does not look like it really got sandblasted uh, we are just still, we're still dirty uh, from whatever they used to clean it and that. Okay, so that's it for the bottom of it. We really don't have that much else we can look at on these on the bottom. Uh, if these were like a gull wing, we would start looking at our... Um, uh, flying probe where they probe them before they send them out to see if we have more than one witness mark. Uh, you really don't get that, that much of a witness mark on, uh, on these PLCC type devices. Uh, so uh, we, we don't have that clue to look at, but uh, we might we might look at some other chips to look at witness marks so that way you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, but generally the witness mark you're looking to see if it's used versus new because sometimes they'll sell something as new and then you'll have like a ton of witness marks and so you know, hey, this is definitely, you know, used because it went through the flying probe at the factory and then it went through their customer's flying probe machine. Uh, but yeah, let's not worry too much on that. Let's now take a look at black topping. We'll discuss black topping. Uh, I'll show you a photo of it here in a minute. You can kind of see the black topping running down right here. So you can see how this is like a light gray color from sanding. And then right here, it's black. Um, so you can kind of see where they did a poor job of black topping. All right, so also what I have here is a little bit of acetone on a Q-tip. And this one is one of my genuine ones. It comes back clean. Uh, we'll do this to this one too. As well, it comes back clean. But then we're going to do this one, and it is not going to come back clean. So as you can see, it's starting to come off. So let's do that again to this one because I did it a little bit rougher, so that way you can see. That one still comes back clean, but this one, it does not come back clean. We, we are wiping off that black topping. And now you can also see that the texture no longer matches the two because that texture was all just in the black topping on here. So the the paint that they kind of sprayed on there uh, was the texture. And it also ends up taking our etching off because they didn't etch very hard. So when, they're, when they did their laser etching, it actually only etched through that paint that they painted on top of there. It didn't make it through any of the um, actual uh, casing. So that's that's really if if you can take acetone to something and anything comes off of it, you're generally dealing with a, a counterfeit. Okay, let's take a look at these photos real quick. Uh, the first two are actually the ones I used with the vendor uh, when I was dealing with making a claim that they were counterfeit parts. Uh, and then the uh, rest of them were just for this video. So the first thing you're going to notice on this very first photo that you couldn't see in the video is the clarity of the logo. So the Freescale logo is much clearer on here than it is on there. It's kind of blurry. There's no real outline of the uh, blocks on there. Uh, the second thing you 
notice and it kind of jumps out is it's off by 90 degrees so there's the pin one mark there there's a pin one mark there see the the genuine ones they're straight up and down while these are off by 90 degrees so this next photo you may have been able to see it in the video is that black topping there you can see where it kind of runs down and comes across and so it's kind of a light gray and then a black on the top uh, while the genuine ones are just black. And that's an artifact from sanding and then re-black topping it. Um, so then here are the two that I used the acetone on and kind of removed it. So with after the acetone has removed that black topping, it really reveals that directional sanding from where they took it and kind of, they probably put it on a belt sander uh, to uh, sand off that original etching. Uh, so you can't, you know you can't see any anything after you've used the acetone on there so all the etching's gone which would not happen on a genuine part you would still have everything there so uh you can really see that directional sanding coming across really well on that while if you go back to these you really can't see it very much the the black topping really hides it really well we can zoom in as much as we can here and it's still just you know it's not quite visible you can't really see it but you can see that that line there um so yeah the acetone removes that and makes it visible and then this last one's not actually a photo i took it's the thing i got off the internet uh this shows ghosting this is when they don't fully sand it so you can see where they tried to sand this i see let's zoom in a little bit there you can see where they tried to sand it uh, and then there's the original marking kind of ghosting through on here uh, versus the marking they put on there. Uh, th this is obviously like a really poorly done um, uh, counterfeit here. Uh, they may have even actually used acetone to try to remove some of the stuff off of this one uh, before they uh, showed that photo. Uh, but that really kind of is really all what you're going to be able to visibly see a difference in on them. Um, uh, on these, uh, you can kind of see right here a witness mark on there. Uh, a, a genuine IC, like these dip packages and stuff, you'll see one witness mark generally on each leg. And that witness mark is from the flying probe machine uh, in the uh, factory when they produced it. Uh, and you, you generally get one on there. Uh, the, the counterfeits, uh, a lot of times will have multiple witness marks on them. It's either because they're rejects, so the factory, you know, confirmed it, they ran the test on it again, and so now it has another set, and so it went into the reject pile, or it's because it got sent to a customer, and it's actually a used component you got. So this, this really is more of an issue of when somebody sells you a used component as a new component, you'll see multiple witness marks on it. And that's from when the customer then put it in their product and ran it through their flying probe machine. Uh, it's had another set of witness marks around it. And so you, you'll sometimes see three or four sets of witness marks on a uh, counterfeit IC, um, generally from not necessarily being an actual counterfeit, but just because it's a used part that they're selling to you as new. Uh, another thing that we didn't really show that you might see is uh, if you buy a, a tape reel of stuff, uh, the genuine manufacturers are very meticulous about making sure they're all facing the right direction. So that way uh, in a customer using a pick and place machine can put them in. While uh, when they've been retaped in China, when it's a used part getting put back into a reel, uh, a lot of times they'll get you know, one or two of them off. So you just kind of look through the whole reel. And if you see, you know, one off, you know, hey, this this reel has been, you know, re replenished. This was not a, a genuine reel here. Uh, so you may have either counterfeit components or used components that are being sold as new. So it really is a lot more of in-depth testing you can do to really see if a uh, component's genuine or not. Uh, but most of that stuff is not stuff you'll be able to do at home. You know, like decapping, you may be able to do at home. Uh, however, then you're going to have to deal with some pretty harsh acids, and there's a lot of safety concerns that come in with that, especially with the fumes. Uh, so definitely something you would want to use caution doing. Um, and then, you know, a x-ray machine is a really good way to at least look at the bonding wires and see if the bonding wires are done right because you can compare to how they're done in the factory one versus uh, a counterfeit one you'll definitely see like oh the bonding doesn't match uh, and then you can get into a scanning electron microscope and really look at the dye and see if the dye matches 
Um, so there's there's definitely other ways of doing it. Uh, scanning electron microscope is actually a destructive test, while X-ray generally is not. Uh, the um, scanning electron, just shooting those uh, electrons through there tend to uh, damage the component. So, But honestly, that's really outside of the scope of something you'll be doing at home. Uh, on some of the counterfeit STM32 stuff, uh, it won't have the right signature when you try to program it and stuff. It'll uh, th A lot of times they won't change that signature in there. But that's not always true. So some of those CKS32s, uh, they'll, they'll be set to show up as an STM32. So then it just will program it even though it's definitely not an STM32. Before we end the video, I will discuss uh, the vendor. So a lot of these vendors, they are not actually the guys selling it. So they're not the ones faking the chips themselves. Uh, it's generally just poor quality control on their end purchasing them. If you buy from HK Inventories or UT Source, for example, they're not really the guys that have these chips. They're going out to the Shenzhen markets and buying them in market and then selling them to you after you uh, purchase them. So they, they don't have them in stock. And you'll notice that no, like most of the stuff, they don't even actually have it in stock. It'll have some different vendor's name there. Um, or you'll purchase it and then they'll message you and be like, oh, actually we don't have it. And that's because they never had it. Uh, they went to the markets and it just wasn't available anymore. Um, so definitely, you know, when you're dealing with these vendors and you get something like that, um, be aware that they're generally not the ones that did it and they're kind of willing to work with you because uh, they're moving as fast as they can to get these shipments out. Uh, so generally, if you run into a problem like this, they will work with you, uh, especially if you contact them in time. On mine, I waited months because he's just sat in a package because I just had, didn't have time to work on this project. Um, waited quite a while and they were still able to work with me, even though I was outside of their uh, warranty window, like they had like a 60 day window, but I was like, look, uh, you know, we can either deal with this because they wanted me to send them back to them. And that's one thing you can't do. You can't send these counterfeit components back to the vendors, uh, because of export laws. You really don't want to be exporting a counterfeit component outside of the United States, even if you're returning it to the vendor. Um, th there are some exceptions to the rules on that, but it's better to just not even have to deal with it. So kind of like, they wanted me to send it back and I said, look, I can't send it back, but I can send it to Customs and Border Patrol if you'd like. Um, and uh, they were able to work with me from there. Um, so definitely something to, uh, to, to be aware of is your, your vendors, they generally aren't the ones counterfeiting them. Uh, they're buying them at, at a market and then uh, you're just ended up holding the bag. So you got to kind of, uh, it's also important to let them know so that way they know not to go buy from that same vendor again. If they know that they're getting fakes from a particular stall, they're going to quit going back to them uh, to, to get components because that hurts their reputation and that makes you less likely to do business with them. So, you know, they're going to try to avoid uh, the, those stalls if you let them know like, hey, I got a counterfeit component from you. They'll know, hey, don't buy from that stall again. So uh, just kind of it's a two-way street of communication there, uh, but just do not send back counterfeit components for two reasons. E even even if you, you you know your legal loopholes and you know you're willing to deal with the uh, you know answering the questions if it gets caught in packaging, um, uh, you, you still don't want them to go back into the stream because may maybe this vendor you bought them from is like you know what, we don't care and they're going to resell them again. Um, you, you want to avoid those going back into the value stream. So it, if the vendor is not willing to work with you, make a claim on PayPal or make a claim with a credit card company and do not let them go back into that value stream where they can resell them again. But yeah, I hope you guys liked the video and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.